Namo Buddhaya, Namo Amitabhaya. Hello everyone. So today I feel like talking about the life of the Buddha. So many people are familiar with the life story of Shakyamuni Buddha, how he was born in ancient India, nowadays Nepal, in the royal family of Shakya clan to King Suddhodana and Queen Maya, and how he renounced his luxurious prince life to become a monk and to realize enlightenment and to help save sentient beings. But I'm not just going to talk about these simple stories. I like to give the whole picture, the whole image of how the Buddha came into this world and where was he before he even came into this world. So generally for a Buddha to manifest in our world, there will be the eight phases of manifestation or sometimes called the eight phases of enlightenment. So the Buddha will go through these eight phases right, with enlightenment being one of the most important phases. So what are the eight phases? There are some slight differences between Mahayana and Theravada. So I talk more from the Mahayana perspectives. I give more of a complete picture of the life of Shakyamuni Buddha. So the eight phases are first, descending from the Chisita heaven. Second, entering into the mother's womb. Third, his birth. Fourth, great renunciation or become a monk. Fifth, subduing Lord Mara. Sixth, enlightenment. Seventh, turning the Dharma wheel. And eighth, entering Paranirvana. So these are the eight phases of manifestation. So today let's discuss the first phase, descending from the Chisita heaven. So where was Shakyamuni Buddha before he was even being born into this world as Prince Siddhartha? So he was actually in the Tusita heaven. So we discussed about all these different levels of heavens before. Tusita heaven is the fourth level of heaven in the desire realm. So we talk about how there's the desire realm, the form realm, and the formless realm, a total of 28 levels of heavens. And in the desire realm, there are six levels of heavens. And the Tusita heaven is the fourth level of heaven in the desire realm. So why was he there? So at that time, he was called Bodhisattva Prabhapala. So Prabhapala literally means a protected light. So he was Bodhisattva protected light. And he was in the a stage called one lifetime replacement, which means that he only has one more life to go to be a Buddha. So this is the highest level of enlightenment for Bodhisattva. So before we discuss about the 52 stages of enlightenment, with the stage of enlightenment called one lifetime replacement or one lifetime to Buddhahood, right, this is the highest level of enlightenment. So for Bodhisattva who only has one more life to go to realize Buddhahood, they will have to wait at the Tusita heaven to expand the Dharma to the heavenly beings before his time is up to come down to the world to become a Buddha. So why to sit to heaven? Uh, if the levels of heavens are too low, the beings are too much drowned in desire and pleasures. They don't really want to study the Dharma. If the levels of heavens are too high, they are too much dwelling in the meditative bliss. They also don't want to learn much, nor do they have so much compassion. Whereas for Bodhisattvas who is going to become a Buddha, he will choose to stay at the Tusita heaven to expand the Dharma. So the Tusita heaven is kind of like in the middle. And for humbly beings who reside in the lower realms, if they want to listen to the Dharma, they could also ascend to the Tusita heaven. And likewise, for humbly beings who are in the high realm, if they want to listen to the Dharma, they can also descend to the Tusita heaven. So the Tusita heaven kind of represents the middle way, it's just in the middle. So not too much indulge in pleasures and desire and also not too much dwelling in meditative bliss and don't want to come out and learn the Dharma. And we also talked about before how there is the outer court and inner court in Tusita heaven. The outer court is where the heavenly beings they still enjoy desire and pleasures, right? it is still in the desire realm. But the inner court is where the Bodhisattva will expand the Dharma to the heavenly beings.
and we know who is currently residing in the Tusita heaven. Uh, it's the future Buddha, Maitreya. Uh, Maitreya Bodhisattva is currently residing in the Tusita heaven to expand the Dharma to the heavenly beings in the inner court of the Tusita heaven to await for his time to come down to our world, the Saha world, to become a Buddha. So the lifespan in the Chisita heaven we also discussed before is about 4,000 heavenly years and one day in heaven equals to 400 human years. So it's about 576 million years. So after all this time, I Maitreya Bodhisattva will come down to our world to become the future Buddha and, and before that we had Bodhisattva Prabhupada who was the previous life of Shakyamuni Buddha. So after his lifespan into Sita Heaven was finished, then it was his time to descend to our world to become a Buddha. And where was Bodhisattva Prabhupada before he ascended to the Tusita Heaven? So he was actually also in our world to assist the previous Buddha called Kashyapa. So there are many Buddhas, right? not only just Shakyamuni Buddha. We are currently in the teaching period of Shakyamuni Buddha. But before Shakyamuni Buddha, there were also other Buddhas. So the previous Buddha was called uh, Kashyapa Buddha. And in this kappa, uh, this kappa is called Bhadra Kappa, the fortunate eons, there will be a thousand Buddhas that manifest in our world at different times to help save sentient beings. So Kashyapa Buddha is the third Buddha in the Bajrakapa and Shakyamuni Buddha is the fourth Buddha in the Bajrakapa and there will still be many many Buddhas that will come into our world to help save sentient beings in the future. So this is another entirely different topic and we won't go into too much detail about that. So after Bodhisattva Prabhupada assisted Buddha Kashyapa and when his lifespan was up he ascended to the Tusita heaven to expand the Dharma to the heavenly beings to await for his time to come down to our world to become Shakyamuni Buddha. So this was his previous life before he came down to our world. So when his lifespan was near in Tusita heaven, the heavenly beings don't actually enjoy eternal lifespan. Some of them, they might think they do, but that was a mistake. Although heavenly beings enjoy tremendously long, long lifespan, but it's not eternal. When their blessings were finished, they still have to come down to this world. But for Bodhisattva Prabhupada to come down to this world, not because his blessings was finished, but because it was really his time to carry out his next mission, that's to become a Buddha, to realize Buddhahood in our world. So before he came down to this world, he also investigated carefully which family he should be born into. And he discussed with another heavenly being called Gomas. So Gomas was extremely familiar with Jambavipa, with planet Earth, because he had from time to time come down to this world. And at that time, Bodhisattva Prabhupada was asking for his advice and told Gomas, Hey, can you please help me to investigate and to see which family I should be born into? And Gomas suggested to him many, many different royal families and each family was denied by Bodhisattva Prabhupada due to various reasons until in the end he mentioned the Shakya clan from Kapilavastu to be born as the son to King Suddhana and Queen Maya. And Bodhisattva Prabhupada finally agreed and he said, well done, this was also what I thought. I should be born into this family. And he also explained for an expectant Buddha to be born in a family, this family had to satisfy 60 merit. The sutra lists out all the 60 merit. And also for a mother to give birth to the expectant Buddha, the mother also has to possess 32 great marks. So in the sutra, it also listed out what are the 32 great marks. And that was Queen Maya. Queen Maya possessed all of that. And Gomas also suggested a highly respected Brahman family for 
the Bodhisattva to be born into, and the Bodhisattva also deny that. The Bodhisattva said he need to belong to the Kshatriya caste, not the Brahman caste. I will know about the four caste systems in India at that time. So why the Kshatriya caste? The Kshatriya caste is the caste of knighthood because he had to be born in a royal family so he could renounce his family life and to become a monk. Uh, this was one of his manifestation, the eight faces. He had to demonstrate all the eight faces, cannot miss any of them. If he were to be born in a Brahman caste, the highly respected Brahman caste was the caste of priest, then it wasn't so surprising if he pursued the spiritual path. Uh, everyone from the Brahman caste already practicing spiritual practices, so it wouldn't be too surprised. And if he were to be born in the lower caste, then even if he renounced and became a monk, it would not make so much impact. Right? It could not actually influence many beings. Uh, why is that? Isn't this big contrast? Uh, only if you were to be born into a royal family as a prince and you renounce all the luxury in the world that everyone is dying to have, and you became a monk, uh, this could create a huge impact in the world. Uh, imagine now in our world, any prince decided to renounce his prince life, his royal life, and became a monk. This would definitely be an international news, right? I remember a few years ago, there was this uh, rich uh, Malaysian billionaire son that uh, became a monk, and this was uh, national or even international news. Uh, everyone wanted to know why, uh, how could he give up all these millions to become a monk? Then this will have a huge impact in the world. So that was what uh, the Buddha wanted. That was one of his manifestations. So he carefully chose the family that he wanted to be born into. Uh, this was not a coincidence. Everything had been clearly planned out. It was a clear investigation before the Bodhisattva even came into this world to become Prince Siddhartha. So nothing was a coincidence. Right? It's all because of causes and conditions. They accumulated great causes and conditions. So we could have the Buddha to be born into our world. Right? It is extremely, extremely rare to have the Buddha to be born in our world and to encounter the Buddha Dharma while we are here. So we should really cherish this opportunity to learn the Dharma and to practice the Dharma. The birth of the Buddha is such a rare event. According to the Sutra, it was like the appearance of Ujjambara flower which blooms only once every thousands of years. In the Lotus Sutra, we also knew that Shakyamuni Buddha had actually countless eons ago already realized Buddhahood. So I'll quote directly from the Sutra. Good people, in reality, incalculable millions of eons have already passed since I became enlightened. If someone were to take all the worlds in countless millions of galaxies and pulverize them into atoms and travel through countless millions of lands, placing a single atom in each land and keep going until all these atoms were used up, what do you think, good people? Could this number of worlds be calculated? Maitreya and the other bodhisattvas all said to the Buddha, World well, only one, there would be an countless endless number of worlds, an incalculable number, beyond the power of the mind to fathom. Then the Buddha said to the assembly of great bodhisattvas, Good people, now I'm going to explain this to you clearly. If all these worlds were reduced to atoms, and we counted an eon for each atom, the time since I became a Buddha is countless millions and billions of eons more than this. During all this time, I have always been teaching in the world of endurance, and I have been guiding living beings in countless millions and billions of other lands too. Good people, all this while, though I have spoken of various Buddhas by name, and I have spoken of them entering Nirvana, all this was just a matter of expedient means. 
Good people, when living beings come to me, I look upon them with the eyes of a Buddha, and I observe the sharpness of their faculties of faith, and so on. Then, according to what's necessary to save them, I speak to them in particular ways, according to the circumstances. I use different names, and I may appear to be older or younger, and I may appear to speak of entering nirvana, and I may use all kinds of expedient means to explain the subtle, wondrous teaching. In this way, I can enable living beings to develop the mind of joy. Good people, as one who has arrived at reality, I have seen that living beings take pleasure in minor teachings, that their merits are meager and their defilements heavy. I have told such people that when I was young, I left home and attained ultimate complete enlightenment. In reality, I achieved Buddhahood long, long ago. But I said this as an expedient means in order to teach such people and enable them to enter upon the path to enlightenment. So it's not the first time that he came down to our world to become a Buddha. This is just one of his manifestation. Shakyamuni Buddha is one of his manifestation, one of his performance. So in the next video, we will discuss more about how he entered into the mother's womb and his miraculous birth. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Amitabhaya.